Uh, this is our Easter month, and we've been having Easter uh, moments this month. And what is an Easter moment? It's a moment when we consciously, deliberately, intentionally let go of something that does not serve us. Let it die so that we can be born into a new consciousness, a heightened awareness, and an expanded way of revealing the spiritual nature that is already who we are so that we can share our gifts with the world in a greater and greater way. That's an Easter moment, and that's what we're doing all this month. As we've shared this month, uh, that is certainly our metaphysical interpretation of the crucifixion and the resurrection of the Master Teacher Jesus. And each month we've explored a Easter moment in different areas of our lives, and to, we've anchored that moment in a specific and sacred activity, and today will be no exception. So if you all got your cards, if you didn't get one, uh, we'll have one of our, our uh, ushers bring you one later on. And our topic for the moment uh, is where the, rub, the rubber often meets the road with our spiritual beliefs in this teaching, with our spiritual beliefs and our experiences in life. And so specifically, I want to look at financial abundance through the lens of our spiritual beliefs about abundance. And it's a topic that I know that you want to talk about because these are questions that we get often in conversation, in classes, and in one-on-one -on -one conversations. And one of the questions that we get is, how can science of mind teachings help me change my thinking so that I can create greater abundance in my life? Secondly, every time I get ahead, this is what we hear, every time I get ahead, have money in the bank, something happens and the money is gone. I'm grateful that I have that money. My desires are bigger than my bank account, but I feel God will only just give me enough to get by. And third, what is the biggest obstacle that keeps people from manifesting abundance in a consistent way? So it's our intention this morning to address these concerns so that you can have an Easter moment today that will support you in living a more consistently abundant life. And so here is often our experience. We spiritually believe that we live in an abundant universe, and abundance is our spiritual birthright, isn't it? We take uh, the teaching of the Master Teacher Jesus we take him as, at his word when he says, I am come that you might have life and you might have it more abundantly. And we shake our heads yes uh, when we read the Bible verse, consider the lilies how they grow, they toil not, they spin not, yet I say unto you that Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. If then God so clothed the grass, which is today in the field and tomorrow is cast into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, O ye of little faith? I hate that last part. <laughs> o ye of little faith. And we're in agreement with the words, fear not, little flock, for it's your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. And we say yes to our founder, Ernest Holmes, who brought us Talisha Holmes today. <laughs> and the science of mind, he writes, we must learn to come under the divine government and accept the fact that nature's table is ever filled Never was there a cosmic famine. We say yes to all this. We know that the truth is, the spiritual truth is, 
there is more than enough of everything. Good and more good is mine now. The truth is, the spiritual truth is, there is more than enough, way more than enough, for all our wants, our needs, our requirements, and our dreams. But that isn't always our experience, is it? In fact, our experience is often totally opposite of that. We struggle to make ends meet, let alone have an ongoing flow of abundant good to spend, to share, and to spare. So this morning, I want to do three things. First, I want to give you perhaps a new way of being in relationship with abundance. Second, look at some of the reasons we may not be in relationship with abundance in that way. And third, to do a two-part Easter moment activity. So first, a new way of being in relationship with abundance. In her book, The Trance of Scarcity, author Victoria Castle writes that we often think of abundance as being like a river flowing but moving only in one direction. That image is misleading because abundance is much smarter than that. Abundance renews and replenishes itself, flowing in a circular pattern, the same way the breath moves. And each part of the cycle naturally makes way for the next. So imagine, if you will, a circle a circle of abundance. And in this circle of abundance looks, just imagine a clock. And like the clock, we will start at the top and work our way around clockwise. So we start at high noon or 12 o'clock. And 12 o'clock, high noon is aligning. We must start by aligning. Aligning with what? Aligning with those spiritual truths we just talked about. Aligning with the realization that we are already in a circle of abundance. We always have been. We always will be. We can't not be in it. So when we recognize that we already belong in the circle simply because of who we are, will awaken to the inspiration and the opportunities and ideas that we need, which are God's first currency. So here's a little test to decide if you're in or out of alignment. Do you find yourself forcing things to happen? Are you trying to figure it out? Are you trying to make it happen all by yourself? If so, you're out of alignment. And perhaps your Easter moment today is to release whatever is pulling you out of alignment. And we'll talk about that a little bit more as we go on. The second step around our circle of abundance at approximately 2 o'clock is the idea of generosity. Because when we are aligned, sharing and giving come naturally. We are made in the image and the likeness of the infinite giver. To give, to be generous of spirit, is our divine nature. Giving is the exhalation that makes room for the inhalation. There's a beautiful mystic in Africa by the name of Brother Ishmael Teta. And he always has his students exhale fully before taking a breath in. He starts with the exhale. This is the wisdom of the exhale. I can release all of the air from my lungs with the full confidence that a new fresh breath will be there just waiting for me to inhale. Once we clearly understand that no matter what happens, we cannot be diminished, then we are truly free to give. Not only are we not diminished by this letting go, we are in fact enriched by it. There's a story of a wise woman who was traveling in the mountains and she found a precious 
valuable, extremely valuable stone in a stream. And the next day she met another travel, her traveler who was hungry, and the wise woman opened her bag to share her food with him. And the hungry traveler saw that precious stone in her bag, and he asked the woman to give it to him. And she gave it to him without hesitation. And the traveler left rejoicing in his good fortune because he knew that this stone was so valuable that it was worth enough to give him security for the rest of his life. But a few days later, he came back to return the stone to the women. He says, I've been thinking. I know how valuable this stone is, but I want to give it back to you in the hope that you will give me something even more precious than this. And the wise woman asked, and what is it that you want? And the traveler replied, I want whatever you have within you that enabled you to give away that stone. Isn't that beautiful? Charles Fillmore from Unity Church, he says, there is no reason why we should, ha should not have a continuous, even flow of substance, both in income and outgo. If we have freely received, we must also freely give and keep substance going, confident in our understanding that our supply is unlimited and that it is always right at hand in the omnipresent mind of God. So generosity then sends us to our next stop around the circle of abundance at about 5 o'clock. And that stop is attracting a generous soul is a soul that is attractive to its good. Why? Because generosity comes from a place of sufficiency. I have more than enough, so I give. And knowing that we already have is the key to attracting what we desire. And that is the answer to, your, to the question that we get very often, how our teachings can help you create a greater abundance, a more consistent abundance in your life. Align with spiritual truth, be generous of spirit, not out of obligation, but out of a knowing that supply is unlimited and that we attract our good by knowing that it is already there, it is already within us. So to be a powerful attractor, even when circumstances don't appear to be abundant, we must realize that the absence of evidence is not the evidence of absence. And those are words from Carl Sagan, the astronomer. <coughs> Contemplating the cosmos. You know. What about those black holes? You know? The absence of evidence is not the evidence of absence. I love that. Let me say it again. To be a powerful attractor, even when circumstances do not appear to be abundant, we must realize that the, evidence, the absence of evidence is not the evidence of absence. Then we move on to 7 o'clock. Going right around the clock today. We're going to rock around the clock. And that is receiving. Receiving is the depth of inhalation. Ernest Holmes in The Science of Mind writes that principle is ready to fill everything because it is infinite. So it's not a question of its willingness or its ability. It's entirely a question of our receptivity. So here's a quick test to gauge your receptivity. Suppose someone gives you a gift or does something special for you. Do you accept it graciously? Or do you protest that you're not worthy, that they really shouldn't do it? Sound familiar? Or perhaps do you hasten to repay it? 
to live in the circle of abundance, just receive. Just receive. And be open to receive even when it comes in a different form or has a different look that, than you might expect it to have. And finally, at 10 o'clock is gratitude. If we receive fully, gratitude follows naturally. Gratitude is a generative energy that acknowledges our connectedness. Eckhart Tolle, one of my favorite spiritual writers, wrote that it is through gratitude for the present moment that the spiritual dimension of life opens up. When we are in that present moment, when we are being here now and aware of the infinite presence that opens us up to it. And of course, when the spiritual dimension of life opens up, we are beautifully and powerfully aligned. So we have returned full circle back to 12 o'clock to alignment. So we have alignment, generosity, attracting, receiving, gratitude, and back to alignment. That's the circle of abundance. So today, today uh, we invite you into a relationship with that circle in your life. And the third uh, question is, one of the biggest obstacles that keeps people from manifesting consistently, from living in this, this circle of abundance, are the stories that we tell ourselves about abundance. We all know these stories. We all have a lot of them. Impoverishing stories. See if any of these have a familiar ring to you. I never have enough. Life is unfair. If I have this, others won't. You have to work hard for everything you get. It's too late for me. I don't deserve abundance. I have to do everything myself. No one in my family ever amounted to much, so I won't either. Life is hard. God will only allow me just enough to get by. I can't ask for help. I have to hold on to everything I get. It's all a matter of luck. Nothing ever works out for me. You can't have money and live a spiritual life. I'm not responsible enough to handle money. Attracting good clients in business is hard. Anybody recognize any of those stories? No? Yeah, yeah. Me neither. I was hoping you guys would tell me about them. You know? So regarding our stories, the question is never, is this story true? The question is never, is it the right story? That implies there, there's only one choice. The most helpful question we can have in questioning our beliefs is, is this story useful? Does this work? Is it working for me? How's that working for you? Given what I care about, what I want to contribute to life, and what matters to me most is the story I'm telling myself, a useful one. Does it work? Does it help? Most of us constantly replay hundreds of our inherited in collective consciousness from our parents, from the world around us, these default stories that suck our life energy out and steal our peace of mind from us. We tell ourselves these stories and then they become self-fulfilling prophecies. Because that tape is always rolling, right? And they're like a, an ejector button kicking us out of that circle of abundance. So this morning, what we're going to do is we're going to eject one or more of our stories that we tell ourselves about abundance so that we can be in a 
beautiful relationship with that circle of abundance, which is our inheritance. So everyone, right now, relax, take a deep breath. Close your eyes if you like. And we're going to go into just a little meditation and identify a story or story that comes to mind for you. One of your more prominent ones or a couple prominent ones. And then see this story in your mind's eye. It's big, isn't it? Now in your mind's eye, shrink it down, smaller, 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 until it's small enough to put in the palm of your hand and place it there in the palm of your hand. And once it's there, take a deep breath and blow it away like a dandelion <laughs> and watch it dissipate, disappear. And as it disappears in the wind, see yourself being drawn, pulled into this circle of abundance. You're at the top of the circle in complete alignment with spiritual truth. You just had an Easter moment today. And now move clockwise around the circle and come to generosity that place of overflowing abundance. Let this generosity pour out of you in a very specific way. And now for your exercise, take your note card and your pencil, pen that were given to you when you came in this morning and take out a card, your card, and legibly write out a prosperity blessing, good wishes, or whatever outpouring of generosity you would like to write knowing in a moment someone else in this room is going to get that card and you're going to get one of theirs. And you may sign your card if you wish or not. 